Hiya, darlings. This is Hello Live English Advents Devilish Diva. The, the one and only Narissa Ravencroft. Hello, hello. It's me. Back from Japan, which I have been for a little while now. So I'm sure at this point, you guys are well aware that I'm back. But in case you didn't know, I'm back. I'm not in Japan anymore. Hi. And, yeah, I just got to play Dungeons and Dragons, a TTRPG, not specifically Dungeons and Dragons, I guess, on Fan Fanya's stream. Happy birthday, Fanya. Not like she's watching this, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah, we're back. Uh, congrats on my free Fonda merch. I know, I kind of insane. I'm actually really excited because I was looking at it and I was like, shit, it's like, it's D&D type stuff. Oh my god. I need it. <laughs> I didn't know that there was going to be a gift of free merch. If for winning. So, haha. <laughs> I get it signed too? Do I really? Huh? I feel like I must have missed something at the end. I had to go for a bit after. And then I was like, oh no, the stream ended. I thought she'd go for a little longer. But yeah, I'm on. Uh, I'm having a good time. Signed and licked by Fauna herself. God, I hope so. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, free merch, but it's not to like. Exactly. So, I've been having a good day. Yeah, this is totally Callie, Callie and Mume being kind senpais and, and letting me win. Surely that's what it was. Mm -mm -mm. Not EP today. I'm a little EP. <sighs> but that's because I'm always EP. That's my secret. I wake up and I'm EP. I go to sleep and I'm EP. I go through the day and I'm EP. First, I suppose I'll tell you a little bit about my day today. Uh, did I tell you guys? I decided to try a different meal service. But this one, they send you groceries. So you have to cook it. But I prioritize picking stuff that is really, like, quick. That you can make really fast. Like, in under 30 minutes. So, this morning I had carnitas. I was like, mmm. Yeah, I did cancel the last one. I just got tired of it. But today I had carnitas. And yeah. I had a poke bowl, but I it was salmon. And I don't like salmon. And I was like, mmm, I don't want this. And then I offered it to my whole family. And all of them said, no, we don't want raw fish. I was like, you're all fake. <laughs> yeah. Poke. Oh. I had a poke bowl. You know, like a... You know. <laughs> but so, uh, then, otherwise, I've been... I've been actually having kind of a hard time, Jailbirds. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be so real with you. Well, we'll talk about the trip in a second, but I've been trying to, like, pick some song covers that I want to do in English. And like translate them and I'll get like a really 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 good line that I'm like oh yeah oh yeah this is gonna be good and then like I'll struggle with the rest of the song and I'll be like mm, I just don't like any of this <laughs> so I'm a bit um I'm sad because I want I want to just do a good job but then but then life is suffering you know <laughs> So, nothing particularly is in the works. Yeah, it's a little bit of writer's block, I guess. Or, like, one of the songs is really, really fast. So, like, I like the lyrics that I have, but the issue is, because of how fast the song it is, it's impossible. Even though it technically fits, but just because of how many, you know, English is, like, a lot of weird noises, you know? So, yeah... It's not struggles of a perfectionist, it's just struggles of making it sound good. You know what I mean? <laughs> Promises to keep cover when- I, I don't know! That'd be fun. Oh, ow. Sorry, I stabbed myself on accident. Evie, thank you for the super. But yeah! Uh, the flow- I mean, the flow is fine. It's just literally the fact that the song is too fast, that there's no way to make it work. 
like easily like unless you it's like do you guys know St steven sondheim he has that one song not getting married today where it's like pardon me is everybody there because if any is there like they go off a garment to the wedding i'd appreciate you going even more because you must have a lot of better things to do and not a word of it to probably remember probably you know the band i'm gonna marry because i'm not because i wouldn't ruin anyone as wonderful as he is so thank you all for the gifts of the flowers thank you all now it's back to the showers don't tell paul but i'm not getting married today like obviously that wasn't a very good job because i was just doing it on the fly but you could generally probably make out every single word that I said okay just then. And that's the issue, is it's like he wrote that very specifically to be able to be really, really easy to sing and like to say all the words in one breath and everything. Amazing, amazing lyricist. I wish I had his talent because right now, I mean, that's one of the things that's harder about translating to you. <laughs> I didn't get a single word. Evie! I could do it slower, but it's pardon me. Is everybody there? Because if everybody's there, I want to thank you all for coming to the wedding. I'd appreciate you going even more. I mean, you must have lots of better things to do, but not a word of it to Paul. Remember, Paul, you know the man I'm going to marry, but I'm not because I wouldn't ruin anyone as wonderful as he is. I'm reciting lyrics. I'm not singing them. But yeah, wait, still too fast, please. No, it's not. Pardon me. Is everybody there? Who the heck is Paul? The man she's gonna marry, except she's not. Because she wouldn't ruin anyone as wonderful as, as he is. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a... Yeah, Shakespeare been real quiet after this one. I know, right? But yeah, so... I'm a Paul auntie now. Oh my god. Are we invited to the wedding? Go, can't you go? Why is nobody listening? Goodbye, go and cry at another person's wake. Or perhaps I'll collapse in the abs right before you all, but take back the cake for the shoes and boil the rice. I don't know. Anyways, but that's beside the point. The point that I'm trying to get at is I'm trying to write these lyrics. They're really, really fast that like I have to try and find easy words, but trying to maintain the meaning and get the meaning I want while keeping the flow is literally like impossible so I, I i have to compromise something but people are gonna be mad if i compromise the meaning to make something that just flows better then people are gonna be really mad and be like oh this isn't what the song means actually the translation is a bu -bu -bu. and then i'm gonna be like oh my fucking god shut the fuck up please you don't know anything about translating lyrics try singing what you just wrote and tell me if it's possible. <laughs> or I'm going to have people who are like, um, this doesn't sound very good because it's too fast. And I'm going to cry, you know. They say that anyway, so yeah. But they say it less if I just do a good job at my job. <laughs> Is an older song or a newer one? I don't want to leak it. I'm not going to tell you. Because I might not end up doing it at all. Because if, if I can't get lyrics, one of the kind of crappy things is that I can't start a cover at all in, unless I've done the lyrics if I'm going to do it in English because of the process of everything. So I have to I have to finish lyrics first. So if I don't if I don't finish the lyrics, then I can't commit to it. <laughs> It's hard for you to sing English songs? No, it's writing lyrics, translating Japanese songs that is difficult. Ugh. Ugh. Do I have to get permission? I mean, you always have to, get, you know, get permission before you do something, but it's more the matter of because I'm translating something, I have to submit the translation. Um, so, yeah. That's, that's, that's just it. I just have to submit it. So I can't just be like, hey, I want to sing this in English. Because they'll be like, okay, cool. What, do you have the lyrics? And then I'd be like, no. And then they're like, okay, come back to us when you have those. <laughs> I saw someone asked about Lilium. I just want to confirm, sadly, there's no update. We're, we're doing our best, but, uh, sadly for... The time being and foreseeable future it's gone i'm really sorry i'm really sad so uh i know i know people are really hoping for like a positive update but i don't have one if there's ever an update i promise i'll tell you 
and I know everyone wants to know what's happening with it, but I, I don't know anything. <laughs> there's been no update. I've asked about it. There's, there's nothing. So, <sighs> yeah. So unfortunate, but uh, please just enjoy my other covers in the meantime. Onegaishimasu. As it is gone. But yeah. It's okay. But I'm doing my best to try and uh, think of something else to cover. <laughs> so, yeah. Ashwa, thank you very much for the Aka Supa. Glad to see you back. Was busy visiting my family in Japan to go to Holofest and to pour in still fun for the first time there. Made a bunch of shrines to see Advent Merchant stores, but sadly, dude, mood. I was looking around, I couldn't find anything. Um, but anyways, I guess you guys don't want to hear about my lyrical struggles and stuff. I'm sure what you'd rather hear. Oh, before uh, Shill, listen to Down by the River. Please, if you're here, I will even get the link real quick and pin it for you. Give me one sec. Give me, give me one second. It'll take me a minute. Uh, a few minutes, maybe. Um. Eh? Give me one sec. One sec. One sec. One sec. One sec. Down by the river is only about fourteen thousand views away from. Uh, reaching a million views and it would really mean a lot to me if you guys would help it reach a million views so please I'm sure you've all already listened to it I understand please go click on it anyway and listen to it again in the background in fact if all 4,000 of you who are here clicked on it um clicked on it a few times I opened it separately like five times. I think we'd like be there. <laughs> if you guys just all opened the link and listened to it and then closed it and then reopened it and listened to it and repeated that five times, then we would be at like a million views probably. I don't know. I can't count. <laughs> anyway, that's beside the point. On to Japan. So, uh, obviously, I just mysteriously woke up in Japan. No, I, I got on a plane and I went and it was supposed to be a surprise, kind of, but um, I feel like even before Ki Kiara mentioned it, I feel like Kiara had mentioned it in a stream or like a member stream, so everyone already knew. <laughs> so I felt a little bad because I wanted it to be a big surprise that I was going there. But I didn't have a surprise to tell you. So I'm really sorry already. I apologize. <laughs> you didn't teleport? I wish I could teleport. Uh, did you scold Wawa for it? No. I don't like to scold people for anything. So I went to Japan. And I obviously I went there for Fez. As if any of you attended, you might have seen that I signed around the venue a lot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, the first night, I I kind of I feel like what time did I even get there? I don't remember, but I was fucking exhausted. I feel like I got there kind of later in the day. So Manetan was very nice and picked me up and dropped me off at the hotel because I was uh, scared and I realized. We'll get into this, but I get lost a lot. I got lost a lot in Japan. <laughs> I don't know how to use the train station. Uh, I can't figure it out, even with directions. I get very confused. I get very lost. Um, <laughs> I get very lost. I didn't need a translator. I just, I just didn't understand how the signs worked, so... I'll get into it later. But anyway, so I got to the hotel and then I found out Kiana was at the hotel. So pretty much I feel like immediately I went over and ha ha I headed over to her room. And like we we talked, we did like a thing, one of those like Twitter spaces. And I got to use the, the one I, I prepared. 
the room I prepared so you guys could chat in it. So that was a lot of fun. It was very nice to see Kiwawa. He talked my ear off about some stuff, so very nice. And then I'm pretty sure I just went back and slept at that point. So, yeah. Um, I can't really remember what specifically was happening. But I feel like me and Wawa later, now, now that Ina has talked a bit about it, I don't feel so bad talking about it, but Ina, <laughs> you know, she had the idol disguise on, the typical idol mask, sunglasses, and a hat, you know, like looking very, very, uh, muy suspicioso. So when I, I noticed her and I was like, yo, I, I, her tails weren't out, okay? So I didn't recognize her, but like at the same time, like I just had a feeling, you know what I mean? Like I was like, something tells me that this is Ina. <laughs> I, I'm like, I just know, like her hair's all tucked in the cap. So like, I can't really tell, but I'm like, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Did I say tails? I meant tentacles, obviously. They both start with T. Anyway, so everything's tucked up into the cap, so I can't see anything. Everything's covered, and I'm just like, I just know. I just know that that's Ina. And then, uh, she left. Kiara came down and got me, and I was like, I think I just saw Ina. <laughs> but then later that day, uh, I, I went to the Kombini with Fuamoko. They came to get me and take me around, and they're like, hi! And I was like, hi! Because, uh, you guys probably know this, but, like, me and Advent are all pretty, like, obsessed with each other. But, so, I really love, I really love when I get to meet, <laughs> when I get to meet with any of Advent. So, I was so happy. And they took me around the Kombini. And that's where, first, first we went to one Kombini and then we went to another. And that's where Ina's story, I think, she told happened. So, I was walking and I saw that girl again, who I was like, I'm pretty sure that's Ina. And I was like, I, I I, think I even told Fuamoko, I was like, I'm not sure, but I think that's Ina. And they were even like, oh, Bao Bao, do you think we should go ask? And they're like, no, 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 we shouldn't do that, Bao Bao. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just walking around. And I was like, okay, well, anyway, let's go to the next, uh, let's go to the next store. Because they were just like showing me like, this is where everything kind of is in these store layouts. So we went to the next Kombini. And the weird thing was Ina who was in that store, was in that store walking around with, like, a, a, like, big cart thing. Not, not a big cart, but, like, one of those hand baskets. Yeah, the, the like, hand baskets. Suddenly, so we go into this other one, and it, admittedly, it was pretty close, so it's not like it was super far, but suddenly, she walks into that one, too, and grabs a hand basket, and I was like, are you, are we being followed? I was like, maybe that's not Ina, actually. <laughs> Because somehow, somehow, they 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 had a basket in the other one and came into this one and grabbed another basket and they look so suspicious, wearing sunglasses inside during the night when there's no sun. I was scared. <laughs> but again, I was like, I'm pretty sure. And then she texted me and she's like, hey, were you like in the cold baby? <laughs> I was like, yeah, it was Ina. She was very nice. And then the next morning, uh, she, Fuamoko, I love them. They coddled me because I was so scared. So they like, for the first day and second day, especially, they were really nice and handled everything for me. Like all that, all the talking in Japanese. I was very thankful for my, my beautiful ladies. But uh, then Ina did that because I was like, I'm going to the combi. Can I come say hi? And she's like, I'm going to the kombini. Let's go together. And so she showed me how to use the self-checkout. So I became very, very proficient at the at the kombini self-checkout. Very nice. And she even taught me, she's like, this is how you talk to the cashier person. So it was it was quite nice. <laughs> I didn't get Nihongo Jozud, but I think I was with Kiana. And Fuamoko a lot of the time. And they're both very fluent. Or all three of them, rather, are very fluent in Japanese. <laughs> so they ended up just talking. And 
I actually, the very last day, I'll tell you this because I'll probably forget, I had the most fucking embarrassing moment where I was ordering ice creams and I wanted to say futatsu and I held up two fingers but for some reason my brain forgot how to say futatsu and said hitotsu while holding up two fingers and she looked at me and she's like hitotsu one finger and I was like uh 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 hitotsu two fingers and she's just looking at me like huh? <laughs> and I was like two <laughs> Two, please. Two. <laughs> yeah, for real. It was uh, very embarrassing. Yeah, Nihongo, not Jozu. Like, I should have just spoken English. I was trying my best, but my brain did not work. And I was, like, really nervous the whole time. Because, I don't know. Speaking, speaking English is hard. And speaking Japanese is also hard. And so, I, like, I tried... But I just like failed like miserably. <laughs> there was there was one time when I spoke Japanese though and it didn't go badly. I don't know why. So I came up one day to my hotel room and the cleaner was there. And I was like, eh? Eh? Cause I literally was gone for like five minutes and then suddenly they were in my room cleaning. And I don't I don't even remember what happened, but I totally understood what was going on and I like correctly answered uh but i don't remember what it was <laughs> but they basically were just like oh oh uh can we clean it and i was like oh no it's fine but like in japanese i don't remember i don't remember exactly what was said but is there a cleaning schedule probably but it was just weird because i was i was gone and back so quickly that like Maybe they just saw and assumed I wasn't coming back, so they're like, "Oh, we can we can clean the room." Cuz if if you're in it, they won't clean it. Yeah, but <laughs> Are you interested in learning more languages from apart from Japanese? I don't think I'm capable to learn multiple languages at once. If I could learn all the languages in the world, I would really love to do that. I'd really love to know Korean and Japanese and Spanish and French and German and like uh, Celtic, you know, but like, <laughs> I can barely, I can barely do anything. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm trying to remember what order everything happened in, but I don't remember. I don't remember anything. Well, you guys remember, I'm 69% Celtic. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, Gaelic. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yes, I meant Gaelic. Because it's nice, and I want to be able to sing all of all of the Celtic woman songs with no problems. Because every time I listen to them, I'm like, they're so great, and then I can't. <laughs> I can't do it. How's your jet lag? It's getting better. Um, I didn't really sleep well last night, though. Hi, Rish. It's Irish. <laughs> How could you? <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm I'm just suffering, basically. Because I think with Gaelic, I'm probably saying that wrong, by the way. It's really difficult because, like, you can't even look up pronunciation easily. So, like, versus, like, Japanese, I can, like, plug it into Google Translate and, like, ask it to say it for me, and it's pretty accurate. You can't do that with Gaelic. So, I'm just, like, I just sit there and I'm, like, well, guess I'll fucking die then. <laughs> That's how you say Gaelic? Oh, okay, so I'm not fucking crazy? Okay. I'm also part Irish. Admittedly, I'm more Scottish. Scottish and Irish. And Gaelic is a dying language, but you know... You know what is also a dead language? Fucking... What's it called? Latin. Latin is literally a dead language, and you still have weird little people who come out and they're like, Um, actually, I was alive during the times of Caesar, and I know exactly how they pronounce this. Because I am a Latin bro. I studied Latin in college. 
and therefore I know everything. I was I know everything as if I was a fluent speaker because I, I I totally know how to speak a dead language. Because like let's be real, I try to learn Japanese, and so much of that is listening to people talk, as well as talking to people in Latin. You can't really listen to any native speakers talk because there are no native speakers. Where are they? They're all dead. It's a dead language. I'm just saying. I'm just making a point. Learning a language is really important to listen to a native speaker. And when all the native speakers are dead, the Vatican, they don't fucking count. They're the fucking Vatican, man. They speak, they speak the, the different kind. Because there's multiple pronunciations. I remember some people, for my Lilium cover, were going around and they're like, um, so you switched up the pronunciations. This is the church pronunciation here. And then this is the actual native pronunciation. Um, <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck are you talking about to me? <laughs> what are you saying? What do you mean? I don't understand. I don't get it. But yeah, so I'm sorry. Like, Latin's a dead language. So I think that Gaelic could still... Well, there's still people who have it as a native language. I feel like... I feel like they could make... <laughs> I feel like they could... They could... They could make guides for it now. So that it can never really dis disappear, you know? That's just my thought. That's just my my desire. Oy. Yeah, time to fly to Ireland. I need to have, like, my moment. What is it called? Do you guys know that show Outlander? I'm getting really off topic, but do you guys remember that show Outlander? I, I watched a little of it because my mom was really obsessed with it. And I think about it sometimes because that's an echo. <laughs> it's still running how it's coming back there's what else do they have what else can they write about but it, it's, it, was a, it was kind of a fun show but i didn't like the direction it was going because i was like this is the last season i watched something really fucking awful happened when they kidnapped the main character. And I was like, this is just fucking horrifying. I don't know who would want to watch this. <laughs> What's Outlander? It's a romance. It's basically an isekai kind of, I guess, where she gets sent to the past. Uh, and she, she basically, she's like a modern day doctor from the UK. And she goes to, I, I don't know. She goes... I don't know if it's Ireland or Scotland, actually. I'm pretty sure it's Ireland, but I don't know, actually. Spoilers! This is, like, season one stuff. It's Scotland. Calling an isekai is wild. It's, it, it is, though! She gets isekai back in the past. To the actual, actual history. In 1700 Scotland. Okay, perfect. So she goes to 17,000s... Uh, Scotland, and then she meets the love of her life. And by the way, she has a husband in her current timeline too. But to be fair, she didn't think that she was ever going to go back. Uh, so she was convinced that she was going to be there forever. And she falls in love with this guy and they have a baby, but she has to take the baby to the future when she finds out how to go back. So then her actual husband in the current timeline raises her daughter that she had with this man from the 1700s <laughs> it's a very interesting it's a very interesting story also for people saying don't mix up scotland and ireland the only reason i did is because i haven't really like watched the show i've like seen it in passing and occasionally I've stopped and stared and been like, what the fuck are you watching, mom? But, like, I've never, like, actually, like, watched, watched it. So I don't really know what's going on in the plot. My mom tried to explain it to me because she was like, you should get into it. I'll start it over. I'll watch season one, two, three, four, all of them with you. I'll watch them all. I'll watch them all again. So I, I don't actually know what's going on. Apart from that, it's, yeah, isekai... But then her husband dies. So then she finds a way to go back to the past. Once her daughter is an adult. 
and then she's with him again. Except now, t 20 years have passed for both of them. Anyway, uh, enough about Outlander. Spoilers? Who cares? Are you guys ever gonna watch Outlander? Let's be real. You're not gonna watch Outlander. If you, are you, you guys are serious with me. You want to watch a romance made for women about a sexy Scottish man who calls you Sassanac and is like, only has eyes for you. My wife watched Outlander. Yeah. See, most of you are saying nope. And some of you are saying yeah. And I know you're saying yeah as a joke. And I'm sure like maybe two of you are saying yes, seriously. And for those of you, I'm really sorry. I'm women. So sure. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like a dreamboat. He kind of is, actually. Like, he's, like, a pretty, like, a sexy guy. But that's because he wears a kilt. And, like, I don't know. Something about kilts, man. <laughs> anyway, Japan! So, uh, I had a really good time. It was really nice. Um, Kiara took me to an onsen. I really wanted to go. This one was more similar to... Uh, I, I really wanted to go to one. Do you guys remember Oedo Monogatari? Probably not. But it was like this like festival one. It actually completely closed down. So it just full on doesn't exist anymore. So I can never go back there. But like basically it had a festival inside. Um, so you could like go and play like ninja stars, like throwing, you could do like the like little like trying to like get the water balloon, like from like the water moving, you know what I'm talking about? Like just a lot of like festival games. And then there was like uh, an, a mini arcade, like lots of really yummy food. And then like, there was like a proper like onsen outside outdoor onsen, like natural spring. So I really wanted to do something like that again. <laughs> But Kiara picked a place. I let her because uh, that's fine. Uh, and it, it was it was pretty similar. If you guys have ever been to a Korean Jim Zabang or like a, it uh, mm, it was it was more similar to like a Korean like King Spa that we have in the states rather than uh, rather than what I associate with onsen. But granted, they are similar. But so I was like, oh. I love this too. <laughs> but yeah, she she was very nervous. Um, she very much wanted to just smells different. Yeah. Well, also, I I it was very like how fancy are onsens? I mean, I don't really think they necessarily have to be fancy, but like I just want like a really big outdoor bath, you know, that's like natural and beautiful. I want to go there during the winter. <laughs> that's that's my desire. And, but yeah, we, we ended up actually not spending much time in the actual hot spring baths. Because uh, we got hot really quick. And then we had to go like sit out of the water. So I was a little sad. Because, you know... I, I, can go, I can go to a bath. Like a bathhouse. Pr pretty much whenever if I really, really wanted to. But, like, an actual onsen, like, natural spring, I don't have them where I am. <laughs> so, I was a bit, uh, sad that I didn't get to spend more time in the, the natural onsens. But, I was, I still had a very good time. And I was, of course, just mostly happy to be spending time with Kiara. She was very nervous, though, which honestly made me nervous. Because she was very much like... I I've been to onsen before. Or more so like Jim Zabang, the Korean bathhouse. With like my female friends. And like it's all bathing together. You know, like you bathe together. You, you wash yourselves in the shower together. And then you get in. Like, it's natural to just like glance at each other. And then that's kind of it. Because like even when you're there, you're like kind of looking around at all the other people. And you're not looking in like a gawking way. Like you're just looking around. You're not meaning to like look anybody up. But, like, after you take an initial, like, look, like, that's enough. Your your curiosity is gone. And then it's, yeah, it's hard not to look. But Kiara kept being like, don't look at me. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. And I was like, I'm not trying to look at you. But you saying that is making me have a hard time not looking at you. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's It's like when someone says, don't look at that thing over there and points at it. And then you have to, like... 
naturally be like, I need to not look. They're, they're pointing. They're telling me to not look over there, but I can't look over there. And it makes it really, 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 really hard. That That's basically what was happening. Because, like, again, you don't think about it when you're with, like, a friend. Because you'll just, like, you'll both, like, check each other out, like, once. And then, like, you, you don't really do it again unless it's on accident. But because Kiana was so self-conscious, I kept trying to be really, really careful to not even accidentally glance at her. Because I did once. And she was like, were you staring at me? And I was like, no, Kiara. I was literally just looking across the room like this, you know, and so like I was like I didn't really see anything because I wasn't paying attention to you. But yeah, so it was like a, it was a little intense. It was, it was a little intense that I I think, I think if I were to go with her again, I would actually prefer to go to one with swimsuits so I could relax a little more. <laughs> So I didn't have to feel so nervous about if I accidentally looked at her or not, you know? Uh, yeah, next time she'll make me go on blindfolded. Exactly. Mm. Well, we had towels, but you're not supposed to bring the towels in the bath. Um, some people do, but like you're not supposed to for like obvious reasons. Like if you think about it for two seconds, like they don't want you to get your hair in it. Even if you wash your hair, they don't want you to put your towel in it. Um... So, like, you have to be really careful. Yeah, Callie likes onsen. I really need to get Callie to go with me. To one. I need her to... to I'm, I need to message her and be like, Callie, senpai, bring me to your best onsen. <laughs> but, yeah. I don't know. I prefer... Personally, though, I prefer to go to a place that... I can be naked in. Because I when I feel naked, I'm free. And honestly, I feel like onsens are so nice because you're just like, you're around like regular people. I feel like it puts you in a healthy mindset because, you know, usually when we see like women's bodies, it's like through social media, very posed, like very weird, like, and just like not realistic. So like, I really like onsen because I'm like, oh, people just look like people. <laughs> people just look like people. That's really nice. So I, I think it's a, I think it's a really beautiful experience actually. So I really like onsen. Up, uh, she said that people were staring at us, but I didn't notice. I was like, "Why are you paying attention to people staring at you? Just pay attention to me." <laughs> so yeah, but that was really fun. And then we got some good food together, and then we went back home together. Yeah, of course, it's always nice to hang out with Kiara and bye. I also got to meet Ame that day. We hung out and we got a meal together. She's very sweet. She's very nice. She's nice to talk to. She's so cute. I love Ame. What kind of food? Um, That's for me to know and you to fantasize about. <laughs> what indeed did we eat together? Hmm? You mean Sencho? I wish. I was actually... Uh, you guys might have seen the tweet, the tweet that came out that Marin posted. So you guys who don't know Japanese might not know this. I don't know Japanese either, but uh, Marin did a stream and she was a little inebriated. She's a little drunk. I think she was drinking and she, she said, I, I feel like I, I don't know 100% um, what she was saying because I don't speak Japanese, but basically it seemed like she was saying to an extent, oh, I'm kind of sad because a lot of people kind of throw the word Oshi around too lightly. So, like, uh, not a lot of people, they say they Oshi me, but they don't really, like, like me that much. Uh, and then someone, I think, must have said my name. And she's like, well, Nerissa, she says she really loves me, but Nerissa really loves everyone. So, I, I can't... I can't misinterpret her. I I don't want to, I don't want to misinterpret and think that she really likes me more than she does. I don't think Sencho <laughs> I don't think she understands that she's like like Kiara in Ian is my Kamiyoshi in Ian, right? But in JP, uh 100% Marin is I I love she is correct that I do love everyone, but um I have a very special connection. <laughs> <laughs> with money <laughs> she i i wish that i did speak japanese because i would like i would like to be able to actually talk to her because i feel like we have a lot in common 
and I feel like we'd be able to relate to each other. But that's just me. Maybe that's just my copium. Like, that's just me, like, huffing. Like, yeah, me and Marin would get, get along. Yeah, me and my Oshi could be best friends. You know? <laughs> you know? Um, so, I don't know. I love Kiata, obviously. I think that's very apparent. But I think it's also okay to show some love to my JP, Kami Oshi, Marin, who also deserves some love sometimes. I don't think I should be not allowed to love other people that i love just because it might make kiara jealous because <laughs> she already knows i love her i literally made so much time to hang out with her i went to the maldives with her you know i flew i flew so far away to hang out with her she's the first person i saw when i came to japan i love her very much so you guys don't ever have to question even if i reject even if I reject a snotty tissue, <laughs> you guys don't need to reje reject that I love Kiara, you know? <laughs> you don't take a vacation from marriage? Kiara has been very clear that we are not married. So I don't know what you're talking about. The only person I'm married to is Ollie. Because every time I'm like, he he, married, she's like, hmm, I don't know. I never wanted to marry you. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, fine. <laughs> then I guess you're not my wife. <laughs> I still call her my wife, though. Did you meet Nene? I did meet Nene. I heard she thought I was fucking weird, but in the best way possible. <laughs> I I got to meet, I think, all of ID. With the exception of Muna. But I got to meet everybody. It was very nice. So, yeah. Uh, there's so much to talk about. Yeah, the best way possible. I don't know what she meant because I tried to be actually so normal. <laughs> I tried to be normal. <laughs> and she thought I was weird. <laughs> what did I do? I don't know. Zeta confirmed you weren't a Rizzler. I, I feel like I saw her and she was like really cute. And I think she like did a little spin. And so I ended up... um being weird and kissing her hand immediately because i don't know i just i could tell that she yeah i i just could tell that she would like that and i think she did <laughs> ollie was so sweet too she came and she's like my wife and i was surprised by how strong that little zombie is i looked at her and she rushed me and i was like oh I'm tall and I've got big assets. Ollie is so small. She's not, she has nothing on me. She picked me up and spun me around. And I was like, oh, <laughs> whoa, she's strong. It was amazing. I don't mind stuff like that happening at all. So I was very happy with it. But you know, when I kissed Zeta's hand, suddenly Ollie said, huh, I'm your wife. Why aren't you kissing me? So I went and gave her a kiss on the cheek. <laughs> I thought it would make her happy, happy. That was nice. Very nice. But that morning, actually, I didn't have anything to do before I met all of them. So I actually had uh, texted some of uh, Yofi, my Twilight buddy. And she was like, oh, yeah, I can meet up with you this morning. <laughs> uh, so I, but here's the first instance of me getting lost. So admittedly, I feel like this is my copium, but I'm going to blame Eofi because she gave me the wrong address and so I walked all the way to this place and it wasn't the correct place I was supposed to meet <laughs> so I was crying and I was like Eofi I don't think I came to the right place <laughs> and she's like oh it's okay it's okay this is where I am come here <laughs> And then I made it the second time, but I basically walked in the opposite direction for, like, 10 minutes, so. Ugh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you rejected Yofi for bro reason. I didn't reject her. I decided I need her for myself. You guys don't understand. Yofi, Yofi. I, I guess somehow I didn't realize too much but like she had her hairstyle differently than usual and i just looked at her and i was like oh my god wait a minute <laughs> i will 
You're my brother. He can't have you. You're for me. Sorry. Not even possessive sister. I think Yofi should be mine. He can find somebody else. That She's mine. Yofi said, I want to protect my brother. She was wrong. She didn't understand. She didn't understand that I, I realized I needed her for my, my harem instead. <laughs> so yeah, I, I got to hang out with ID. So first I think I met in, in a, a group, I met Yofi, Rene, Risu. I think it was just those three. And that was so nice. I... <laughs> I, I was like, I was super pumped to meet them. And they took very good care of me. Because I was lost. Kobo was so sweet too. Kobo, Kobo was like, ah, Nerissa! Noichan! And she, uh, uh, after Fuamoko came in, she was like, I, I have a treat. I have a treat for everyone. So she, she passed out these candies. It was very sweet. And I was like, oh. I ate it right away, but then... Then Fuamoko were like, we have to cherish this forever because it's our first gift from Kobo Senpai. And I was like, shit. I shouldn't have eaten mine either. I just ate mine without thinking about it and threw away the wrapper, but I should have kept the whole thing. I shouldn't have eaten it. Uh. She was really short. I mean, I knew she was really short, but there's, there's something about seeing someone in person next to you and seeing how short they are. And that was very, yeah. <laughs> Fuwaba lost it! No way. Well, then I'm glad I ate it. Because I didn't lose it. <laughs> yeah, everyone everyone was really wonderful. Kyla was great, too. Uh, she was there, and I was like, Oh, my fellow tall buddy. And then we stood menacingly in the corner for a little bit and watched everyone. <laughs> so, yeah, it was fun. You laugh at Kobo's height. I think she said I did, but I don't remember laughing actually. And she says she's average, but I don't know. I she's short. I'm sorry. She's a shorty. She's a cutie, but she's short. Nothing wrong with being short though. Just like I'm tall, you know. So yeah. But um, then I got to meet all of Myth. So that was really nice. It was my first time meeting Gura Senpai. I was so excited. She's so cute. Of course, you know, seeing her, I was like, oh, oh my god, it's Gura. <laughs> her tail. She's so cute. Uh so I tried to be I tried to be uh a little a little a little small. I'm obviously very tall, so I'm a little bit intimidating to, to the short ones, you know. So I tried to be I tried to be, you know. <laughs> But she was so sweet. She she's very she waved at us a lot and she's so smiley. So um, me and Fuamoko were like, ah, she's so cute. <laughs> she is short, but it's okay. Does she have pretty eyes? Yeah. Very sparkly. So it was nice. And then uh, if for those of you who are at fest might have seen, but we signed. We signed the same spot, near the same spot. Just because that was what was open on the, the big signboard where everybody signed. And I was like, oh my god. I got to I got to sign next to Gura Senpai. <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was very fun. Yeah, and then uh Kelly also ate with us that day. Which was nice. Me and Fuamoko and then Callie. I think one other person, I hate to forget, but I think there was one other person at our table, but it's slipping my mind at this specific moment. But we all we all got to eat together. And I had the Hachama pancakes and then the Kanata drink. I really like the Kanata drink. It was really good. Tasty. <laughs> Can you confirm that Gura and Mume are not the same person? Of course. Why do you think they're the same person? They're completely different. They don't even look the same. Yeah, Mume came late, but I got to see her later. Haha. <laughs> um. Did you meet Promise? Yeah, I did get to meet Promise. Everyone who was there. Mm hmm. I got to meet Kuroni, and I was like, Kuroni Chiwa. <laughs> 
And then I got to meet I got to meet Bay Senpai. And and I got to meet Iris for the first time too. So I was like, oh. And then as I already said, I got to meet Mume. So I was like, oh. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, it was it was very nice. Me and it was actually funny. So moving on from this, talking about crony, I um I ended up my last day in Japan. I really didn't want to do the watch along because I was like, oh, you know, it's my last day and I had a lot of fun doing the watch along the first day. But I was like, you know, I really want to be able to hang out with some of my senpai because who knows when I'm going to get to see them like this again, you know. Um, so I was like, OK, uh, I, Fuomoko was fine with it, too. They're like, yeah, we think that's OK because like we live here. So but, but we get it where you don't get to be here a lot. But then I was like, OK, wait, I don't have any plans now. But, 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 <laughs> I got to hang out with Crony. I texted her in the morning and I was like, C Crony, <laughs> would you hang out with me today? And it was actually kind of funny because I, I was trying to figure out my plans for the whole day. So I had mentioned, uh, I, had, I had messaged a few different members to be like, hey, what's your plans? Just to see what's going on. I had actually messaged Kyla first. And Kyla said, oh, sorry, I'm busy. Uh, and then I had texted Crony and she's like, oh, I'm free right now, but I'm going to be busy around this time, which was the same time as Kyla said, but I didn't put two and two together. So then I ended up making plans with Lisu and uh, Iofi. So me and Crony went and we had a little bit of a date. It was very nice. I was so happy to get to talk to her. And so I was like, hee hee, hee hee, <laughs> hee hee, blue women together. I was so happy. She was so nice too. I kind of panicked because we we're at a cafe and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't think. So I just ordered an iced coffee. <laughs> but you guys know I don't really like coffee, but I really wanted the sandwich and I was fully intending to pay for it. But then Crony was like, yeah, I got it. And I was like, somebody. <laughs> I love you. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, she she handled it. And then we, we talked for a long time. I was actually having so much fun talking to her that like by the time we were like, oh, we should we should leave. Um, we ended up like it, it was about the time that like her meeting was supposed to start. And I was like, oh, I have to meet up with with uh, Yofi and Nisu too. So we were going to the same place. So we we're like, oh. We'll just walk together since, like, we both have to go. And she didn't tell me she's hanging out with Kyla. So I walk in and I see Kyla. And I'm like, oh, that's why you both couldn't, weren't able to hang out later in the day. You already have plans. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, then I was like, oh, I see. I see. I'm not invited. Jokingly, of course. I Not that I would have expected or wanted to crash in on their plans because I already had plans at this point. So, but yeah, it was it was pretty, it was a pretty funny coincidence. So, that both of the first two people I messaged were busy. <laughs> but thanks to that, though, it did mean that I got to see Kyla for a little bit. Um, so, it was, it was very nice. Very, very nice. <laughs> yeah, Cotton 4K. But I, I honestly, I wish I could have hung out with Crony a bit longer. I, I had I had a lot of fun hanging out with her that I was kind of like, oh, I kind of wish she didn't have... I, I mean, I'm glad. Her and Kyla clearly had a really good time, so it's selfish of me. But I was like, I really wish I could have hung out with her longer. I had fun. Hmm. You mean Zeta's manager? I saw through her right away because she's too tall. So when she's like, I'm Zeta's manager, I recognized her voice. And I was like, no, you're not. <laughs> Did you meet Marin? No, this time I was I was already kind of booked up for the most part, except for that day. And so I didn't want to like message, you know, me, the non-Japanese speaking person in the room. I wasn't about to like message Marin and be like, hey, you're probably busy. <laughs> But will you stop everything you're doing and hang out with me today? The person who doesn't speak any Japanese and we can just speak passion Japanese and passion English to each other all day. Like, yeah, I, I didn't want to do that. So I didn't I didn't get to meet any JP senpai, but there will be other opportunities in the future. So 
I told Maddie and I said, I want to, I want to meet you next time I'm here. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm looking forward to hopefully doing that. She says she wants to meet me too. She said, we can, we can talk. We can talk lots. And I was like, hee hee. <laughs> Can't you say that to me? Hee. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so. Hopefully next time. I'll look forward to it. Yeah, next next year for sure at Fest. Again, hopefully. <laughs> practice your Japanese. I practice every day. I just suck, man. But yeah, so. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm having... I, I had a really good time. I got to meet a lot of people. I got to do a lot of things. Of course, um, probably one of the highlights, though, was getting to hang out with Fuamoko. As I mentioned, and you guys already know, I'm, like, obsessed with my genmates. If that's not already clear. So, like, I was really grateful that they... They took time out of their days to, like, spend time with me. <laughs> but then it was also really nice because, like, they took really, really good care of me. And, um, there, there was actually one... You, you guys know that Kelly, she invited us all to go do this really fun stuff. So, like, we made these paintings that I think Kiana posted about. Um, and then we all went out to dinner. Um, that day... I had accidentally given my manager <laughs> my internet box that I bought. So Callie lost her phone and I lost my connection to the internet. <laughs> and it was actually very uh, scary for me because I was like, if I don't have internet, I can't contact anyone. So if I get lost, which had happened twice, there was one... Oh, I was meeting I was meeting the twins uh, somewhere, and I ended up accidentally getting on the train going the wrong way, and I just didn't realize. So I was like, had I not had my phone, and had it not been tracking me, I literally would not have known, and I would have probably gone, like, over an hour away. <laughs> so... Yeah, it was rough. But they they saved me and they were like, "It'll be okay. We've got you." And they they were even like, "We'll get you. We'll get you a taxi in the morning." So like that way you can just like text us, text us and then we'll get you a taxi. We'll bring you to us and you'll be with us. <laughs> but yeah, so but that that dinner, I I actually Callie was so nice. She comforted me. And so was Crony. Because I'm... I, I got really stressed about it. Because again, like, being so nervous, I'm like, I don't know Japanese well. I, I don't have a lot of yen on me. So if someone only takes cash, it's difficult. Um, or like, if I don't understand something someone says, I, I there's a chance I can get, like, stuck somewhere. And I won't even know how to, like, give them the address properly. And... <laughs> Crony was so nice. She's like, "Hey, while we're at dinner, I I can let you I can let you on my my on my internet." <laughs> I was like, "Will you do that for me?" <laughs> like I was I was actually genuinely really touched because I was like, I was definitely one hundred percent overreacting. It wasn't that big of a deal. I was just anxious, you know, as happens. Um, I, I just got anxious, but Crony was like, I don't worry, it's gonna be okay. And then Callie was like, it's gonna be okay. And then, so I, I stayed, I tried to stay calm, but I started crying a little later after that. But they were all so nice to me. <laughs> Even though I felt really bad, I was like, I'm sorry, we're having a good time and I'm crying. <laughs> but yeah, they, they're all, um, I love them all. I, I love them very much. They took very good care of me. <laughs> So, and then, but yeah, then the next day I got to hang out with Fuomoko, and Fuomoko took me uh, to a shrine as well on a different day. I'm mixing everything up because it's all like, it's all like mixed up. Like it, everything went into a blender in my head and I, I don't know anything. So that's where I'm at right now. <sighs> but yeah, hollow Ian love for real. Did you touch Mokoko tummy? No. You can't just touch her tummy. Like, why would I redeem that on not in a stream? Oh, that's my dog. Do you hear her? She's being angry. 
You can also download Google Maps offline. I tried to figure out how to do that, but I couldn't. Do you cry easily? Honestly, kind of. I kind of, I kind of do. I, I get stressed pretty easily, and when I do, I, I start crying. <laughs> It's more like, it's just stress, so, like, obviously sometimes I'm sad and I cry, but who doesn't? Who doesn't do that? Let me go take care of my dog. She's pissing me off. Hello, baby! Sorry about that. She was stuck outside the baby gate. And she doesn't like being stuck outside the baby gate. But yeah, overall, it was a really good time. I got to do a lot of shopping. And I got like a really... There was so much Sakura stuff. But I made... I made a critical error, Jailbirds. <laughs> you ever... You ever go and like... You buy a ton of omiyage. You buy a ton of souvenirs for your family. And like... You buy a ton of souvenirs for your family. And you don't think about the fact that there won't be enough for you. So then you get home. And then you get the eco bags that you bought. And you realize you got four instead of five. So now there aren't any for you. And you only have them for all the people that you bought omiyage for. And then you unlock the snacks. But you realize for everyone to be able to get two of everything at least. That everything will be gone. <laughs> and then you realize that that the the things you bought. The handkerchiefs you only got four. So now suddenly... <laughs> Now suddenly, you come home and you unpack everything and you don't have anything for yourself. So, I was a bit... Uh, obviously, I was like, well, I'll have the opportunity to go back someday, but my family might not get to ever go. So I will, even if it makes me sad, I will make sure that they get the souvenirs that I bought for them. <laughs> So I bought like a ton of snacks and stuff and I didn't get to try any of them. <laughs> but I was really excited too because I was like, Oh, it's Sakura season, it's all Sakura stuff, so much Sakura! And then I, yeah, I didn't get to eat any of it. The one thing I did buy that I got to eat that I did get for me was a cheesecake. And honestly, I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell if it was molding. Don't think badly of me, but so like I part of me was like this is clearly a part of the cheesecake because it's showing up enough like inside the cheesecake, but it was like these very very light dots, and they were all very like similar. So I was like I'm pretty sure this is like part of the cherry blossom flower, because it's a cherry blossom cheesecake, and it didn't taste like mold. And sadly, I've accidentally eaten mold before, so. Yeah, I was like, it's probably fine. <laughs> it didn't taste bad. It was like a really, really good cheesecake. And it didn't go bad until the 28th. So actually, I finished it today. And it still was technically supposed to be good. And it didn't need to be refrigerated. So, anyway. <laughs> yeah, it didn't taste like mold. It didn't really look like mold. It was just like black little specks, you know. But yeah, my whole family ate it. And I told them, uh, I was like, I don't think it's mold. So I told my whole family, I was like, yeah, if you see that, it's not mold. So just eat it. <laughs> but I was like, I really hope that's not mold. Because I just made my whole family eat this cheesecake. <laughs> oh, vanilla bean. You might be right. I don't know. It was a little big to be vanilla beans. But yeah. You should refrigerate everything. I mean, it was completely sealed. Once I got it home, I refrigerated it when I opened it. But, yeah. Imagine if it was. <laughs> I poisoned my family. But, yeah. I'm pretty, I'm pretty positive it was fine. It wasn't sesame seeds. I'm pretty sure it was, like, parts of the sakura flower. But the thing that just got me about it is I was like, but there was no pink leaves anywhere. Why would there only be, like, parts of this, like, pickled stem? Because, like, that's what it looked like. The color was very similar to, like, um, 
the the like stem of a pickled cherry blossom is exactly what it looked out or looked like excuse me black specks no it didn't look like hair it just looked like it was a part of the cheesecake like, it didn't even look necessarily like an additive, necessarily. It just... Uh, anyway, stop talking about the mold, I potentially. It wasn't furry at all. It was, like... It was weird, because, like, there was some on top of the cheesecake, and then there was some, like, actually, like, in it. So, like, after cutting into it, there was, like, little... So, I'm, like... I don't think... It, and it was too big to be vanilla bean. Like, it, it was... It was, like... It wasn't small, but it... I mean, it was small, but not that small. It's not mold, then? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Was it fluffy or fuzzy? Neither. It just it just looked it just looked like a part of the cheesecake that was a different color. Adds to the flavor. Yeah. Did you Miyago? I did. I introduced myself and I forgot to do it formally, so I was like, "Hi, Neri Saleben Crofto, y'all!" And he uh, started laughing at me. So <laughs> he's like, "He he he!" And I was like, "Hi." I'm stupid. <laughs> Sorry. Huh? Did I really just say that in front of Yago? How could I do such a thing? That was a quite a funny situation to me. Uh. Yeah. Still have the package? Uh, I took a picture of it. Risa, did you try the Fuwao Moko drink? I did get to because they, they had it, so they let me try. So I drank off their straw. And I got to taste it when it was both fuzzy and fluffy. It was really good. Don't flirt with Yago. I was not flirting with Yago. Excuse me. Don't be fucking weird. Still have that Yago sound board? Um, can you hear that? I do, but it just doesn't work sometimes for whatever reason. I don't know why. Yeah, me and that's why when we were streaming and we were like sharing water, and like I was like, no, it's fine. We had already had so many indirect kisses that I was like, I don't need one right now. <laughs> it's not necessary. It's okay. Yeah, you guys don't hear it. I didn't hear it either. We heard you tried to separate the twins. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I would never do such a thing. I would never- I would never try to separate Fuamoko. <laughs> yeah, no, not Yago. Not an indirect kiss with Yago. I mean with Fuamoko. I'm pretty sure now most of the Hollow Live girls actually I've had an indirect kiss with at this point, to be completely honest. Mokoko was sad. She was not actually sad. <laughs> Maybe she was. I don't think so. Sitting between them. Look, sometimes I need I need I need her. I need to have them on both sides of me. Cause I want to talk to both look, they have each other. Every single day, I got to see them a few days out of the, like, five days I was there, okay? Stop flexing? About my genmates? My coworkers? How is that flexing? I work with them. Huh? Go, go make friends. Excuse me? My genmates are my friends. I am allowed, I am allowed. I'm allowed to talk about my closeness with them. That's not flexing. Yeah, they're my lovers. You want you want the both of them? Of course. They're both mine. It should have been me. No, it should have been me. I deserve this. <laughs> get get your own friends. Fuamoko are mine. Huh? <laughs> Fuamoko are mine. I wonder if Ki why would Kiara feel betrayed because I have friends? Huh? Huh? <laughs> yeah, no, it's not flexing. Yeah, I'll fl you know what? Yeah, I'll flex. 
I got to indirectly kiss him. I got to share so many meals with them. And then we got to sit in a hot, sweaty room singing karaoke and watching together. And I never, I never regretted a moment of them, of it. I was so happy. Sweating together, being together, eating together was like easily, like I had a lot of fun in Japan. But spending time with Fuamoko, honestly, like, don't get me wrong. I really loved meeting everyone. It was amazing. But spending time with Fuamoko was my highlight. Because I love them so much. <laughs> it was so nice to see them and spend time with them. And, like, eat with them. Like, I don't know. There's just something about hanging out with the people who, like, are, like, your closest friends. That, like, is really special. Does that make sense? It's like similar to like when I when I spend time hanging out with my sister. It's like a oh, spending time with my sister is so nice. Spending time with her is so special to me. Like that's that's how it feels when I hang out with any of Advent, you know. So, I love them very much. Your Mokoko impression during the off cloud was accurate. I have I know. I was like, oh wow, when I went back and listened to it after, I was like, whoa, I would I did so good. JP Holomab's next on the list of indirect kisses, hopefully. I would never force that on someone. <laughs> if they want to, if they want to share a drink, I will happily share a drink and then talk about it later and be like, guys, Sencho gave me an indirect kiss. Hee <laughs> hee. Which sister? Both of my sisters. It must be rough since you don't see them often. It must feel amazing when you're together. Exactly. That's what that that is really what it is. Cause like I love them. They're my girls. But then, you know, we 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 make a big effort to hang out often because I think we all are pretty obsessed with each other, to be honest. So that's one of the reasons that like we keep the advent clubs going because like even when we're all really busy it's really nice to be able to like make time for everyone and spend time with each other because like it's just so important to us because again like advent we really love each other you know <laughs> so like it's nice because then we have an excuse to call and catch up a little bit and then play a game together or just talk and like that is so special to me i love them but yeah, so anyways, it was really special to be able to hang out with Wamoko and so much and have them take care of me and be able to sit between them a little bit and be like, hee hee. But don't get me wrong, that was rare. I didn't really split them up that much. <laughs> it, it was mostly, it was mostly not the case. They were mostly still sitting together just every now and again. There was one time I did split them up though, and it was uh, during the day i was leaving we went out to get monja with mume bay uh ina me and fuamoko and instead of sitting by bay i sat down so it forced them to sit on opposite sides they're still across from each other on the table but then they're like <laughs> they were talking just like normal and they're like see when you when you separate us then you have to look in so many different places <laughs> And I was like, but I wanted to sit by Mokoko. And next time I'll have to sit by Huawa. And next time I'll have to have them sit on either which side of me. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was really great. I had a really good time. Obviously, if you can't tell, if it isn't abundantly clear from my gushing, I love, I love Hollow Life. Oh. I love Hollow Life. But yeah, it was it was really nice to just get to meet everyone. Like I think, I think that was also what made it really special. Cause like, getting to meet everyone in person is so different than just like doing things online. You know, cause you you get to really like get a, a different vibe from people when you're like in a room with them. You know what I mean? Like you you can feel the physical vibes. You know. And like, so it makes it a lot easier, I think. <laughs> Cause I, I'm not, I've said this before and no one believes me, but I'm actually pretty introverted. So it's kind of like, I, I like have a hard time 
talking to people. So I really kind of have to put in a lot of energy. And I, I, I think I actually talked about it a bit with Crony, but I kind of like do my best to like match the energy of the people around me. So if someone is clearly like, kind of shy like i'm not going to be too pushy with them but then is someone like ollie who's re like really excited i'm going to be really excited too and that isn't to say that i'm not genuinely feeling those emotions because i definitely am but like i it's just like a an immediate like whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> gotta make sure i'm i'm making everybody happy gotta make sure everybody likes me <laughs> iris said i was giga open I, I'm surprised she thought so. I was trying to think when she said I was flirty. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but still. But still. He. Yeah, Iris is so sweet too. I wish I could have talked to her more. We didn't get to talk a ton ton, but it is, it is what it is. And then when I came back, I found a video about the, the Willy Wonka, like, thing that happened. And I sent, I sent it to Crony, because I know she likes the depressed Oompa Loompa. <laughs> you know, getting to hang out with people like that, it makes you feel more comfortable talking and being like, he. Regarding Mume, Mume came in kind of late. I was at, um, I actually did a funny thing. So the day that I hung out with Eofi and Disu, um, I, I actually went and got Yakimiku with them. And, um, I, I offered to pay. That was my co-high tax. I was like, let me pay for you girls. You saved me today when I was going to be all by my lonesome. So we we hung out and it was really fun i took them out to yakiniku they picked the place and uh it was really good but they they were clearly like done done so i was like okay we got to get out of here but i was still kind of hungry and i had been invited also to yakiniku like later with uh zeta be ina I'm trying to remember everyone who was there because it was kind of a lot is Fumoko there i don't think so Anya was there, Mume was there, Ina was there, A was there, Ame was there, and then me. Okay, yeah, that was that was everyone. So I I went and we we're <laughs> we we're chilling. We were like enjoying eating. I got to Yakiniku again. And I was so I was like, oh I might not be too hungry. I ate so much Yakiniku. I ate all the food. <laughs> I ate so much food. But then Mume was on her way. So she was coming to us. I think they talked about this publicly too. But she got lost. And then she, we, we kept waiting for her. Because we're like, no, you have to come. We'll, we'll, we'll be here. We'll wait for you. Don't worry. So. Because I wasn't. I didn't know that the next morning. I was going to go out to get Monja for them. For, or with them for sure. So I was like, oh. Mume. I love you. And this might be our last our last chance to meet this this time. Like, you know, like this trip. So I'd have to wait for like next next time we're both in Japan or something. So it's like, please, Mume. Please. <laughs> so, but we ended up um, running into her, thankfully. And then we got to talk for a long time. She's so sweet. I love Mume. She's my Twilight buddy. Her and Fauna are my Twilight buddies. So I was like, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, right. This got yeah. I think it did because I was watching it. But so we got to talk, and then I was really glad though because then the next morning, um, we got to we got to have the monja. So I got to see her again. I was like, yay! It wasn't the only time I got to see you this time. I got to see you again. So she's so sweet. It made me so happy, happy. <laughs> I fell asleep five minutes in a mood. Twilight buddies, let's go, Evo hor horse girl buddies. Exactly, we're both horse girls. Yeah. Mm. Ah. I'll miss the watch alongs too. Did you hang out with Fauna? Fauna was not there, sadly. She's the only member. I'll cross her off my list. <laughs> One of these days. I was actually talking about it to her, and I was like, I want to meet you, Fauna. Because. I feel like I need to explain. One of these days, I need to do, like, a Hololive explanation of, like, my Oshi quote-unquote list. So, 
I have an Oshi in every every gen of Hollow Life, basically. And then I have my Kami Oshis in both EN and JP, right? So uh I have I have like lots of Oshis who I like really, really hardcore want to support. Uh and who if I had all the space in the world, I would buy <laughs> so much stuff. So much stuff of all of them. But uh, m you you guys already know that Fana, I think I've said it before, but Fana is my is my Oshi promise. I followed her for a long time, so like I would watch watch a lot of Kiara stream. But I would also watch a lot of Fana, and I really loved her comfy vibe and her sweet voice. So I'm like, he, fa Fana. <laughs> so it made me really happy today. That she invited me to her stream and let me be a part of her birthday stream. But yeah, I, I really love all of Hollow Live, so it makes it really hard actually. Because I think all of the girls are great. Like, it's hard because even like, I'm like, Fauna is my favorite, but I'm also like, <laughs> I love all of Promise. And then it's the same with, with Myth too. I'm like, Kiana is my favorite, but then I'm like, Oh, but Kuna is so great. Oh, but Kali is so great. Oh, but Ami is so great. Oh, but Ina is so great. You know, like, it's just how it is, you know? You know what I mean? You Like, you feel me? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. What about JP side? Each, uh, each one for Jen? Oh, my God. Let me pull up a list. Okay. Hollow Live. <laughs> Me just looking up Hollow Live, so I can get all the members uh, in one in one place easily. So if we look at all the Hollow Live members, again, I need to stress I love all of Hollow Live. If we're talking about Gen Zero, um, it's hard because Anski is amazing, Sora is amazing, Roboko is amazing, and Miko is amazing. But I mean, I think it's it's not a surprise. Suise. <laughs> Suise is my idol. I love her. She's so cool. Suise senpai. I love her so much. Her music really touches me. And we're both blue. And her voice is so cool. And I love her image. And I love. I just love her. So Suise very special to me. Then in Hollow Life first generation, Hachamatama. Who doesn't like Hachama, especially for, I feel like, us in the English audience? Hachama especially has a very special place. I hear little man. Fauna especially- or Fauna. Hachama! Hey, little man, come in here. Come in here, stop screaming. Hachama has a very special place uh, for a lot of EN, and that applies for me as well. Then, uh, Hollow Light second generation. Ozora uh, Suwaru! <laughs> I just think she's fucking hilarious. I love, I love, I love how energetic she is. She brings the energy. She's the life of the party. And I would really love to be in a room with her. I just feel like that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> you know what I mean? With gamers, I probably Korone. I, I feel like Korone was one of my introductions to Hollow Life. Like when I first started getting into JP. Trying to eat my shoes. Give me one sec. Or oh, he's having fun. I'm not gonna stop him. Anyway, yeah, you me, me. <laughs> I just really like Corona Senpai. So uh she 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 was one of the, my very first introductions to getting into Hollow Live. So uh, she's very special to me. And then of course we know in third generation, oh so many Nisu. <laughs> she's oh wait, she might be doing But then I'll have to stop when I'm doing the clean pee. <laughs> Where did he go? I think he went under my bed. He's 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 spirited himself away. 
And then in fourth generation, Hollow Forest, I really like Toa. Toa is my Oshi in that gen. And she's, again, one of my like top, top Oshis because I just think she has such a cool voice. She likes music. She likes to sing. And, and especially, I already really like Toa, but I actually had a very like pleasant interaction with her. Um, when I, I was, we're, we're like interacting during the, the, uh, sports festival and she, I felt kind of alone in like the pre, the pre stuff, <laughs> but she was, she kept racing with me and she was waiting for me and I was so happy <laughs> and I was like, do <laughs> I felt so touched. It made me so happy that I could, uh, I, I, I think I actually teared up because I was like, Toa Senpai is truly a Yasashi Senpai desu. Yeah, so, hee <laughs> hee. And then, uh, fifth generation, uh, Shito Botan because Botan, uh, first off, love her cool energy. She's just cool as fuck, for one. She's really good at games. Then, uh, it doesn't help that her artist is um one of my favorite artists <laughs> the one who did uh the designs for shiny colors uh idol master some like shit man how how could you do this to me and then with Holux, it's really hard because uh Rui, Rui ne is uh i think technically my oshi but koyori is also it's it's hard to i can't pick between them you know but Rui ne is definitely uh I love her. She's my wife. She's not my wife. I don't think she wants that. But <laughs> she's a senpai I respect a lot. And every time I see Louie, I get so happy. And her music is so amazing. Like, ah. With, with Holux, it's really hard. Because I think all of them are really solid. So I love them. <laughs> I love them a lot. I love Hollow Live. So yeah, that's my that's my rundown. And again, I could probably go off about pretty much every Hollow Live member and like explain like why I think they're great and why I like them because every single Hollow Live member is like really amazing and has their their own like things about them that just makes them stick out. With Regloss, oh Didika. 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 I love Didika. Don't tell her though. Technically, I'm her senpai. Hee <laughs> hee. It'll go to her head. I'm just joking. I don't. I don't think she knows that though. I kind of stand the kawaii positive genius. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, and again, I think I think all of the Hollow Life girls are amazing. So it's. I know it's kind of hard because obviously. It's it's difficult to state your Oshis because I think sometimes people will misinterpret it and be like, oh, so you don't like so and so, but like, that's not the case. I like all of them, but there's just some that like really really stick out to me, like because of their energy. You know what I mean? Like, but like I like to collab with everyone, and there's certain things about every single every single member that makes me feel really happy. You know what I mean? I'd love to see in Radin's outfit. Honestly, me too. Oh, I got the like cookies from Fess with like our faces on them. I got uh, Kanade-chan and Radin. <laughs> so I had put, yeah, Polka's so amazing too. Like th that's the thing, like, unless I go through, unless I go through like literally all of them and talk about what I love for all of them, it, there's always going to be that feeling of, oh, then does she not like, but it's like Polka to, uh, Polka's so fucking amazing, and she's so underrated too. I just... <laughs> it's really hard, is my point. So, well, I don't ever want any of the senpai to feel like... Uh, to feel like I don't, like, care about them as much as someone else, because I'm happy to talk to anyone and everyone. So even, like, like, Fana might be my my Oshi in Promise, but like, I probably talk the most to Mume, you know what I mean? And like, Mume is probably like the person who I'm like, oh, Mume, I'm so excited to talk to Mume, you know what I mean? Just because we talk so much that like, yeah, I'm a Mume lover. <laughs> so yeah, either way, moving on from the Oshi chat, all of Hollow Live is beautiful. As for my Advent Oshi, that's impossible to pick. 
Who is your advent, Oshi chat? Tell me. Who is your advent, Oshi? Unless it's me, don't type it, actually. I'll get sad. <laughs> On Arisa, Aradia. Hey, wait a minute. She's not a member of Advent. I like when people type Arcadia. I think it's really funny. Or like when people miswrite my name as Narissa with an A instead of an E. I'm like, heh. <laughs> he. I see. A little man, my beloved. Little man's my Oshi too. Little man underrated. My loud, noisy kitty. Bia. Ah. But you know, so I technically, I think, have four Kami Oshis. Five. But they're not all in Hollow Live. Mm. Six? Uh, it's hard. So I have, I have obviously Kiara, and then I have Marin, and then in Idol Master, I have three from the different series. My ultimate, my ultimate, ultimate Kamiyoshi in Idol Master is Shiki chan, but then I also like Takane Shijo, and then I also really like um, Fuyu chan. So I have those three. Who's your Kami Kamiyoshi? That's hard. So, I only have figurines of both Marin and Shiki-chan. So, Shiki-chan from Idolmaster Cinderella Girls. So, if we're going based off of that, all of my all of my Shiki figurines are tucked in the closet, but all of my Marin figurines are actually on display. <laughs> so, yeah. But I wouldn't say, I don't think I could pick. Like, if you told me I had to pick one, I think I would yeet myself off of the cliff, you know? If someone said, you you can only pick one Kami Oshi, and all the others will cease to exist, I'd be like, I'm, I'm going out now. It's not worth it. I will cease to exist. <laughs> you have to pick one? No, I don't. Because if you make me pick one, I will cease to exist. And then those of you who Oshi me will no longer have an Oshi. But yeah, and then I, I have Love Live Oshis too. Maki is my Oshi in Muse. And then in... It's actually really hard for me to pick between Yohane and Mari. But I think Mari is my favorite in uh, the second one. Aqua. And then Kanata in the third one. The Nijigasaki is my Oshi. <laughs> so I have I have one per series. And then if we go on to what's the other one? Uh the other series that I like. Oh, Macross. Someone just listed Lin Min Mei all the way. Lin Min Mei is my ultimate Macross Oshi. However, I also Oshi. I also Oshi Cheryl Gnome. And I didn't watch the new one to be able to get into it <laughs> but Minmei is my girl isn't Macross a mecha show it's a mecha show about idols Misa in shambles sorry Misa what are you talking yeah I, I didn't watch Macross Delta which isn't to say I don't want to I just haven't gotten into it I'm just still look I I'm still broken over the ending to uh Frontier I really need them to give it a more finite ending, but they haven't. And then they released that movie, and I don't know, because they never released it in the West, and there's no recordings of it, so it's not anywhere, and I just can't watch it. But then I had that really good song, Oh, two, one, five, and F, O, nine, Kono koe, kikoe te ka. You know, uh, and I'm just like, fuck. Fuck. Yeah, I'm dying. Is the point. I fucking love Macross. <sighs> Frontier broke my interest in it. The MC is unbearable. The rest of the cast are too good for him. You know, I kind of agree. I like Cheryl, but Cheryl should date me instead. And I think Ronka 
deserves the world also. I don't know. I don't really like, I don't really like the cons. I really liked Frontier and my copium is the fact that they split up Lin Minmei into two characters. Also V Faction, thank you for the pinky. So I really like that they actually split it up. So it's like, you know, I get it. I, I get it. I get how people can love both of them because they're both great. They are effectively just both different parts of Lin Min Mei. So of course they're going to be good. You take perfection and you split it into two. Like, of course you're going to have two girls who are really good. Like, what are you expecting? <laughs> but I actually have the proplica of Cheryl Gnome's microphone in my closet. I fucking love proplicas. I have so many Sailor Moon proplicas. Don't tell anyone. Don't tell anybody. Please. I don't need anyone to know about my weird collecting habits. You do? Yeah. I have like most all of the Sailor Moon ones. Get the Sui- Is there- Wait, 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 wait. Is there a Suisse Mike Proplica? Someone put in my Twitter live tag if there is. Because if there's- If there is, I will actually have to buy it. Please. Please. Yes, soon? Are you kidding me? Like a proplica. Like a prop. It's it, if it, is it a proplica? They just announced it. Oh, I missed it. Someone put it in my live tag, please. Not all of you, but someone please put it in my live tag. I'd really appreciate that. Who's your favorite Sailor Says she? Oh fuck. So growing up, I really liked Sailor uh Mars a lot. And I haven't rewatched this series. However, I did watch Crystal and I, I need everyone to know a secret about me. My favorite celestial body is the moon. It's my favorite. I weep with joy beneath the moon. I will look at the moon and start crying. I just love the moon so much, okay? So, um, and I feel like I really like Rey, but I feel like I connect more with Usangi's story. So, I end up really liking usangi as i watch through because like she's she's like a nobody like when you think about it like i mean all of them are kind of like outcasts in their own own ways so but <laughs> also moon doesn't blind you that's true but yeah so i really i really enjoy sailor moon herself um, but I'm also, like, it's hard for me because I like Rey, I like Sailor Moon, and now I also really like Venus. So I'm like, fuck. What am I supposed to do? Huh? What am I supposed to do? <laughs> My first girlfriend became the moon. Gee, that sucks, buddy. Sailor Mars is my fave. She's my OG waifu. Yeah, I made it hard because I used to really want to cosplay a Sailor Moon character, but like blue is my favorite color. So you think I like Ami, but no. Oh, but you know what? I also really, really like Neptune. And uh, no, wait, actually, I do have a favorite Sailor Senshi. I just forgot about her because I was only thinking of the main ones. Uh, Hotaru, Sailor Saturn, Sailor, Sailor Saturn, <laughs> Sailor Saturn. I actually had the VHS tapes originally for the uh, DIC dub of Sailor Moon and I didn't have all the episodes because obviously that would be really expensive. However, I did have the um, DVDs for specifically that arc with Saturn and like her or Hotaru and what she went through and um, so I literally... I was so caught. I was so stricken with, like, the story. And I, yeah. So, Sal Sailor Saturn. What is VHS? You're too young to be here. So, yeah. I... I really have always had a very big soft spot for Hotaru. She's such a good girl. She's such a good girl. But I also... So I think ignoring the main cast who like... It's a really hard time for me. If you put Saturn in front of me, I'm like, fuck yeah, Saturn. That's my girl. I, she raised me. We grew up together. She, we were childhood friends. But Neptune, I just think is very beautiful. I love her design and I love the dynamic her and Uranus have. Uranus, however you like to say it. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. You're kind of low-key savage. What did I say? 
I didn't say anything mean. Anyways, hi, VOD gang. If you are here, uh, is there a sailor emoji? Probably not. Oh, what's a, what's a good, like, post like a, since we're talking about Sailor Moon, post like a, a cute... Yeah, post a boat emoji. Post an emoji of, of a sailboat. Thank you very much. Please post a sailboat emoji. Onegaishimasu in the comments below if you got this far. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video from me. <laughs> Got a sailboat sailing on a sailboat. Going down the river in my sailboat. I don't think you sail in a river with a sailboat, but that's okay. I've never used a sailboat because I've never been sailing. Because none of my friends or my family sail, but that's okay. You have a Texas accent. If I had a Texas accent, honey, I'd be talking like this all the time. Like, hi there. Hi, darlings. This is Hollow Live English Advents Devilish Diva, the one and only Narissa Ravencroft. Uh, I'm from Texas, obviously. <laughs> this is a Texas accent, yeah, down from down by the south where the watermelons grow. Back to my home, I dare not go. Howdy. Or if I do, my mother will say, "You ever see a goose kissing a moose down by the bay?" <laughs> Uh, I don't, I don't uh, do very good with a southern accent, admittedly. I think a lot of people who hear my southern accent will actually want to kill me. Uh, because it sounds that bad. But to me, or people who don't really know, uh, or can't really do Texas accent, or haven't really lived in Texas, you know, they, they will hear this, and they'll be like, oh yeah, that's totally a southern accent. Yeah, that's what the southern people sound like. It's just like when we watched, uh... <laughs> When we were watching uh, Twilight and then Jasper came out and he has this like really light southern accent that you don't even notice. And then he's like, excuse me, madam, <laughs> out of nowhere and just has this really thick accent, you know? Uh, yeah, but anyway, I, I have anything I get told, I sound kind of like a valley girl. But yeah, sounds a little more Mississippi. Okay, I've never been to Mississippi. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't. I I uh, I am. I'm remiss to tell you that I do not have a southern accent. And my southern accent is not passable as a good southern accent. Sanjiro, thank you for the Aka soup. I just want to say welcome back from Japan. I love my perky Oshi. Also, today is my birthday. Happy birthday! Oh, in my southern accent. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Shanchiro. Happy birthday to you. I hope you have a nice happy birthday and you celebrate it very well. I hope you eat lots of cake. I hope you do lots of things. Uh, and do, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> have a happy birthday, Shanchiro. Everyone, be sure to wish Sean Chiro a happy birthday in your most Texan accent you can. Someone's going to kill me for this. I'm going to I'm going to become dead. I have a friend from the South, and I did my accent once, and they cringe so hard, and they're like, you don't ever do that again. <laughs> and I was like, I sound just like you, though. What do you mean? But yeah, anyways... Calliope is gonna RIP you. She should. Honestly, after that, I I probably deserve it at this point. Let, let's be so real. Oh, by the way, guys, reminder, please click the pinned link. Help help me reach one million views on Down by the River. It's really, really close. But yeah, sorry, I, I, I guess I don't have like too too much to talk about. I had a, I had a really good time, but I also feel like I did like after I hung out with Kiara on the first day. We immediately did and talked about it on a stream. And then when I, I hung out with Huamoko, we uh, went back and then we did... It was not a stream, but like a, a Twitter space. Then we went back and we did a Twitter space regarding the Sakura Miko um, re review of the Taiyaki. And then I had like a little time by myself, but then immediately after... <laughs> it's like we went... Um, 
and then we went and did you know the other stuff and then we streamed for a whole day straight so we talked about a lot of stuff as well as enjoyed concerts you know yeah ah. and you guys got finally an on arc or an archived karaoke of me with Fuamoko. Fifth, fe fifth Fest concert thoughts? I thought it was fucking amazing. I told Kiara about your adultery. She's very disappointed. I don't think she should be disappointed in me. That doesn't sound very fair. I don't get disappointed in her when she flirts with Rene or Pomu or anyone else and get jealous. You know? She, she gets jealous of me, but I don't get jealous and possessive of her. I just don't think it's very fair. Do you guys, do you guys, do you guys come at me whenever she flirts with someone and tell me about it so I can get mad? I think not. Hmm. So I think it's unfair to hold me to that example and act as if I need to be a perfect housewife when that is not our relationship at all. <laughs> yeah, you took Eofi away from Brory. So he hasn't even met her. I have. <laughs> but yeah. I can be your house husband if you want. I appreciate the offer. Can you cook? Can you clean? But you're le yeah, I exactly. I'm legit married to Ollie and Ollie's never jealous. But for some reason, Kiara who doesn't even want to marry me. For some reason, Kiara, who doesn't even want to marry me, gets jealous. How could she? <laughs> Ugh. What if we can only cook but not clean? Um, you, you can, you can clean. You can learn. It's easy. <laughs> Kiara doesn't want to marry you. Yeah, you. There's. She's turned me down several times. What do you mean? <laughs> she's turned me down publicly what do you mean uh yeah what if we can clean but can't cook you can learn cooking's easy cooking is fun too i love i love i love to cook i love the soap opera it really is huh it's like a tele a telenovela <laughs> Oh my god. If anyone knows what I'm humming, no you don't. Don't don't tell anyone. If you if you recognize that by chance, which you probably no one probably did, but if you did, no you didn't. I know. No you don't. No you don't. You don't know what it is. <laughs> Gabriel, thank you very much for the super. I have an education in culinary science. <gasps> and I can clean and do the laundry. I only want 40 oh, never mind. $45 an hour. I'm I'm looking for like, you know. <laughs> Dead weight narrow. Thank you for the soup. That explains why I've always felt like the dainty male wife then uh, is in this dynamic. I see. <laughs> okay, fine. You guys keep saying you know. You know what I was humming? Okay, tell me. Tell me. What was I humming? What song was I humming? What was it? Go on, jailbirds. Go on, don't wait. Don't make me wait. Don't keep me waiting. What song was I humming? Hmm? Since you, so many of you apparently recognized it. CPR? No, not even close. Ahoy? No. Hotel California? No. Freebird? No. <laughs> Wonderwall? No. Druid Sandstorm? No. The Smiths? No. It's a random insert from a song from a musical that if you guys have heard, you have problems. Which I've seen the musical many times, so what does that say about me? <laughs> Never gonna give you up? No! Red Hot Chili Peppers? No! Wasn't it Marin's song? No! Evanescence Bring Me to Life? No! I have the tiger? No, I literally just told you it was a musical. It's not from Hamilton. Uh, it's not from Attack on Titan. Is Attack on Titan a musical? <laughs> Wait, that musical? What one? Moulin Rouge? No. 
Not Moulin Rouge, not Rocky Horror, not Cats, not Heathers. Not Hades Town, but I do love a good Hades Town. SpongeBob SquarePants. Why would it be SpongeBob SquarePants? Repo. You know, Repo the Genetic Opera. To your late wife, that I'd be present in Shiloh's life. <laughs> now, those of you who know Repo, do you do you know Repo? Oh my God, Repo! I love Repo. It's it's a musical. I was obsessed with it. And then I watched it again sometime recently and I was like, oh my fucking God, why did I like this? <laughs> it's so weird. You should still watch it. Yeah, it's it's Re the Repo, the genetic opera. It's a it's got Paris Hilton in it. It's it's very crazy. Uh watch along. I don't think you want to watch along Repo. But it's it's interesting. I'm glad one of you. I think I don't think you actually recognized it though. I think you were just guessing, guessing weird musicals, because I said no to so many. Because otherwise you would have guessed that first, because you would have recognized that 100. <laughs> percent Princess Bride watched all. We need to do that actually. Wild. No thanks for repo. Yeah, exactly. No thanks. No fucking thank you. I don't even want to watch that movie again. Which is to say, I actually do like some of the songs from that musical a lot. For some reason. Also, Jason Vader, thank you very much for the pinky. Okay, Didisa. I'm glad you had lots of fun in Japan. Fauna's birthday was so fun. Advent's bond is so precious. And I love how you, you're like the big sis. The off club karaoke Fumoko was amazing. I ship you on Wawa so hard. Twilight forever. Thank you. I appreciate it. Do you like Rocky Horror Picture Show? Yes. I feel like I've talked about this before, but it was my dream for a while to be, um, I really, really wanted to do that musical, like be in a production of it and be uh, a Janet. So that didn't happen though, but that's fine. I'm in Hollow Life, so. We watch all of Twilight and you don't want to do a repo watch along? Okay, here's the thing. I would need to get a group together because I don't think I can watch Repo by myself. But they also annoy me because they removed the best song, which was Paris Hilton's solo, Come On and Try My New Parts. And I'm still offended that that wasn't in the movie because the movie wasn't very good. But with that scene, I just trust me, it would have been better. It would have been better with us. No, you don't understand. I need, I need to have someone else. I need to have someone else experience it with me in the room so I can hear them go, what the fuck? It probably Mume or Bibu or and honestly anyone I feel like would be a really good choice. But like, I feel like Mume and me watch Cats together, which is also an awful musical. Uh, so I feel like maybe watching that with Mume, she'd probably have some pretty good reactions and be like, what the fuck are you showing me? Get Aradia. Aradia likes it. So actually we could do that. But then, yeah. Would you guys want me to do a whole ass watch along with my sister? Would you like that? No, not cats. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I know Kiara's like, it's not that bad. But as someone who is a really big musical buff and really likes musicals, but also is really passionate about music, it's not good. Like, I can understand how if, like, you're someone who doesn't, like, care about, like, a lot of technical things. Like, and if that's not, like, your, like, your MO, how, like, you wouldn't really like it. Or, or like, you might like it or think it's fine. But as someone who, again, is, like, really involved and has been in so many musicals and is, like, knows, like, so many important things, it's, like, I don't know. It was just bad. It was just bad. Like, we were, me and Mume, when we watched it together, we were expecting to laugh. We were expecting it to be funny. It wasn't even funny. We literally just sat in weird silence the whole time. <laughs> like, it's just... <gasps> oh! Betakin? Eh? I found so many Narissa signatures at Expo. Mata... Ipon... Kite ne? Yeah! <laughs> Hi! I will. But yeah. Would you rather rewatch Cats? I'd rather rewatch Repo the Genetic Opera. 100%. Not even a question. 
<sighs> I would have enjoyed the Cats movie more if they had released the butthole version. I just feel like that would have actually fixed the movie. Like, a lot of the movie's problems would have become better. <laughs> don't, don't ask me how, but, like, at least I would have had something to look at, you know? That, like, wasn't so weird. Because, like, I mean, you guys have cats. They always put their asses in your face. So, like, it just looks wrong to see a cat without that. And, but these weird little human cats, they just weren't doing it for me. <laughs> I was like, you guys look fucking weird. Greedy, thank you for the super. I'll come back to Japan soon at some point. But yeah, anyway, my point is Cats the Musical is bad, objectively. It's just, I, I personally, Taylor Swift was fine. The plot was spotty, but that's an issue with the musical. Anyway, like, the, some of the singers couldn't sing. The dancing was really bad, and, like, the timing was really bad because of the way that they recorded it. And, like, for me, that's important. When you're- even when you're performing live, you gotta keep a steady beat. Beat. Beat for the dancers. I sped up there. You could probably tell that it sounded weird. If you change the tempo randomly, then the song will sound weird. You know what I mean? And there will always be a little bit of change, but generally things stay the same. But especially when you have uh, a band playing with you, you will follow their thing. You will follow their tempo. But if you randomly change the tempo because you're just singing and then you speed it up again and change the tempo and then you slow it down again and speed the tempo, even though the part is supposed to be the same tempo, Suddenly you make it really weird and then you speed it up again. And that's like, that was like part of the issue with cats. <laughs> it just like was all over the place. It was not good. Like changing the tempo again can be really good or like can be like really effective for certain factors. But when it's intentional, there it's something when a tempo is actually supposed to be the same and then randomly goes, you know what I mean? Does that make any sense? <laughs> so that's one of the things that like Kiara I think has great musical sense so I don't know how she couldn't notice that 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 the tempo is so bad that it fucks up the dancers because Cats is about dancing Cats is about dancing and to be able to like do 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 and have everyone hit that on the same time you need a consistent a consistent beat so everyone is hitting those on the same time if everyone just danced to their own tempo no one would be on sync and it's amazing that all the songs that were on like tempo were the ones that were very very music focused because they are dancing focused because they needed to be for the dancers but a lot of other songs were were not and it was really fucking annoying so i couldn't stand it because i just was like i'm listening to slop <laughs> i felt so bad for the orchestra since they're like oh well you know, we we actually have the singers record first so they could do it however they wanted and then we made the the com the band come in and record it after and try to match to them and I was like, "Do you know what you're asking that poor fucking band to do?" It was absolutely terrible. Yeah, it's so I just I could never watch that movie again. Like, at least Repo, it's garbage, but, like, it's fun garbage. Like, Genturns. Genturns! Or, like, the, the line, someone's gonna hang if I don't get my coffee! Decap, I will shoot you in the face! <laughs> like, that, th there's, like, Repo is at least funny, and it's got fucking iconic lines that they just drop out of nowhere. <laughs> But, like, Cats doesn't have that. Like, Cats, again, it's all about, like, the very technical dancing. So the movie is just ruined when you don't have a good beat to follow. I need that coffee. Yeah, exactly. Repo is, Repo is good until I remember that the guy, that guy who played the grave robber, like, was the one, like, making it. And that he just kind of was not, he didn't need to be story relevant. And then I thought about it and kind of a spoiler, but like not really. 
like she doesn't need amber literally her dad established right away is the owner of the biggest company ever like in in this universe but you're telling me she needs to go and buy a legal an, an illegal like uh what is it a sedative i don't really know exactly that she could just get for free like i i don't understand she could get it for free from her dad it just doesn't make any sense to me is what i'm trying to say that's all that's all Yeah, don't question it. Oh, I'm questioning it. <laughs> Deconstructing shitty plots with our own shit. Exactly. Uh. Yeah, I just can't believe that fucking the original... I forget her name off the top of my head. The girl who was married to the guy who wrote Phantom of the Opera, but then, like, cheated on him or whatever, so they, like broke up but like he wrote the role of christine for her sarah brightman she was in that movie and i was like girl what are you doing in repo the genetic opera why are you here and then even the guy who played roddy like i was like he's a fantastic singer what is he doing here <laughs> yeah pk sketch thank you for the sofa reminds me of the lay miz movie see that was directed by the same people which is exactly why you feel that way it wasn't a good movie there was like three people who were like really really good but the rest of them like despite their love for musicals just we're not we're not it uh, messed it all up it really did yeah the director was proud of it because he's like it's authentic and i'm like no it's not so yeah that's why that movie sucks even though the cast is great anyways i'm just complaining at this point we're not even talking about japan anymore i've moved on i've moved on i'm home now uh my walls are mostly painted and i put up new curtains today and i put on like new outlet covers so my room looks so beautiful too bad you guys can't come in and see <laughs> too bad <laughs> is this starian painting back on the wall no i think i want to look for like one of those heavy duty like hangers to see if i can hang it up because i if I can avoid it, since this is my parents' house, not mine, I'd actually really like to not have to actually, like, put holes in the wall if I can avoid it. Like, for the curtains, like, you're just going to have to. You you have no choice. You, you have to do that, because otherwise, how are you going to hang the curtains up? But, like, for my painting and stuff, I'm, I'm going to look. I'm going to look for something. Does it still smell like pee, though? I don't think so, actually. I don't smell it anymore. Hmm. But yeah. The worst thing I think is I would like to go back to Japan. I guess that's not the worst thing, but like, I really miss kombini. Like, I, I liked being able to go and eat at restaurants, but now that I'm home, I really miss just being able to go to a kombini in the morning and get food, you know? And like, it's like pretty good. It's, like, really good. Also, no more DLC for Baldur's Gate. I know. I saw. I'm actually really sad about it. I get they probably want to move on and, like, do other projects. But, like, I I would be willing to pay more, like, for additional, like, areas. Or, like, for additional stories, like, with our main cast. Because, like, I don't know. The fact that we know that there is actually a cure for vampirism... And then they don't, we don't have the option to get that for a Starian. <laughs> but then there's like a lot of places that like, I just would really like to go. Like, you know, like Baldur's Gate is great, of course. And like the whole area is really nice. But like the D&D &D world is so big. Yeah, or Carlax Heart. Exactly. And I saw Stardew Valley got an update. So we are going to have to play that again sometime soon. I don't know. I have a lot to do. It feels like... <sighs> it feels like my my stuff is dying. You know? Like, I have so many things I need to do. Uh, and it's just killing me. 
But yeah, like, I want to go to, like, the... I really wish in Baldur's Gate 3 that they had more areas. Like, I would have loved to have gone to Waterdeep. We heard about it a lot, but it's, like, not an accessible area. And then, like, the... I don't know what it's actually called, but the, like, old elf city. Like, that, like, all, like, the, the high elves live in. I would really like to go to that, or... Uh, where I can never say it, Mensa Berenzen. That's not correct. What, what is it? The scary, the scary drow place. Like, I'd really love to be able to go to all these places that, you know. <laughs> I'd really like to go to all these places. Menzo Berenzen, thank you. But I can't. Maybe in BG4. But they, Larian confirmed they aren't making BG4. And, like, I'm sure that the other games, don't get me wrong, for Baldur's Gate are really good. But I I think that whatever BG3 had, I don't think will be replicated in another one. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, maybe they would, but I don't know. Yeah, no more Starion, which really is what will ruin it for me. That's one of the reasons I really wanted... I was hoping Larian, if there was going to be a BG4, would work on it. Because then they can bring back the characters. Because I think, even though it's using D&D Playbook, I'm pretty sure that Larian still technically owns that IP. Meaning that a Starion is a vampire who lives forever... Unless he gets killed, but he lives forever, so theoretically speaking, he, he could technically run into him, even in a time that's really far off. Um, but I don't know. But then again, I guess Jahira and Minsk, but I, they're kind of like official characters as to where like Astarian was created specifically for BG3, so I don't know. But yeah, that's my copium. I don't know. I'd, I'd really like to see what happens to... I'd really like to see what happens to the characters who are kind of immortal. You know? I guess I'd be lazy, though, too. To just reuse all the same characters when you can make more amazing ones, but... <laughs> Hasbro has hate the idea of not getting all money. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I just want more Starian content. I just want more all of them content. I want more Gale content. I want more Will content. I want more Halcyon content. I want more Starian content. I just want... I just want more. But and at, at that same point, I don't have any time to play anyway. So it's not like I would get to experience it. So... That's my life. Alas. But... Oh no, I'm yawning a lot. <sighs> anyway. Yeah, I want more content, content though. I don't just want like dating stuff. I want to actually be able to like go places and like go on new adventures with this cast of characters. But, you know. Saying that like you wouldn't stream it. I mean, I might, but I don't know. You, you know what I mean? I might, but I'm not sure. That's what mods are for. Mods are not going to be able to build the detailed world and get voice lines that are done by Neil Newbin, you know? You have FF7 waiting? I know, I do. I want to play that too, but like, I feel like I wasn't good at the gameplay, <laughs> mind you, in, um, in Baldur's Gate. Like, very much I was not good at all, actually. So it's like a, <laughs> but like I'm, I feel like I'm very bad at FF7, and I feel like it's one of those games that you actually have to be good at because I couldn't even. I mean, I had this issue with Quest 64. Do you guys know that game? Do you guys know Quest 64? It's like a 64 RPG style game where you're this kid, and I don't even remember what the purpose is because I never got to make it very far because I didn't have one of the save packs, so I could never save my progress. So every time I played, I had to start completely over. Um, I fucking loved Quest 64, but I could never get very far because I could never grind enough. And then, like, if this if the power went out or anything, it was over for me. 
<laughs> but I was never good at those kinds of games. I wasn't really good at the original Final Fantasy VII, even though I really did like like it and like going through it and stuff. But they need to bring back Quest 64 and like finish the plot and make it better because that one lady was really hot. That one lady that you would meet as you went around, she was really hot, and I think I'd like to see her in HD. <laughs> Yeah, not having the save pack was rough. It was impossible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 I feel like I'm doing the Shiori thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know how she actually, what note she does. But yeah. Quest 64 Switch Online Doko Nintendo. Right! Wait, you're right. Can can Nintendo, if you're hearing me, uh, Quest 64, when I got Shimas, please, I do anything. I do anything. I do anything to play that stupid little game again. I loved it so much. <laughs> mm. Please, me just like crying. But 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 but. I think I'm going to call it here for today. We are going to raid into Miss Calliope Mori. Again, if you made it to the end of this VOD and you're a VOD watcher, thank you for watching all the way here. Please don't forget to leave a sailboat in the comments below. Uh, and I will be back very soon. Let me look at my schedule real quick. Why is it doing it like this? Sorry, one sec. Tomorrow, I'm going to be on Iron Mouse's channel at, I believe, 3 p.m. CST doing a Speak with the Devil. So please look forward to that. I'm really, really excited to be able to collab with uh, Iron Mouse. So uh, also don't forget to stream down by the river. <laughs> Toro, thank you for the Aga soup. But don't forget to stream down by the river. I worked really hard on it. It's almost at a million, so it would mean a lot to me if you'd give it a listen a few times. I would appreciate it. But for now, I am going to head out. Oh, also, I released a new short. I released a part two of the microphone shorts. So if you haven't watched that already, please also go watch that. Thank you. Sir Rob, thank you very much for the pinky. Happy birthday. <laughs> but yeah, I will see you guys all next time. I'll see you all tomorrow. And uh, if I feel like it, no promises. But if I feel like it, we might we might stream a bit tomorrow night. But we'll see. We'll see, okay? Look forward to Persona 3. If you're not wanting spoilers, maybe dip out before saying hello to Mori Senpai. But I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Bye, darlings.